me. Usually me, but not today. That is me. Oh, that's not one of those things after the wings. Click the wrong button there, sorry. Good evening and welcome to Flory Models. Here we are live at 7.30 on the 9th of April 2020. We trust you're all doing very well this evening. I'm joined this evening by the two comrades. With us. Hey, comrades. We've got Andy, comrades. How are you doing? Cohorts, well. troublesome people. I don't know, I don't know what, uh, what our group is commonly known as. But probably a lot of people could fill in the blanks on that one elsewhere. And yeah, Nathan but, um, is with us today, but we trust you're all doing very well. It's been an absolute glorious yes. day here, I must admit. Very hot and sunny. How's it been up your way? We had two days of sunshine. It's been mm. brilliant. Sunburn. Yes. We had Tuesday, Wednesday was nice and sunny. Today's been a bit overcast, to be honest with you. But... Mm. No, I must admit, it's been very, very nice. So we've had some uh, good weather. Right, okay, so over in the chat room on the live chat, good afternoon to everyone. Three Musketeers, is that who it is? Or Mouseketeers, that's probably more like it. Absolutely there, Chris, I totally agree. But yes, good afternoon to everybody, or good evening. See, I'm all over the place with these, doing these like non-stop and everything. It's literally Groundhog Day. I don't even know what time of the day it is at the moment. But yes, we're slowly getting there, making our way through, which is the main thing. Uh, Andy seems in a more happy mood. Well, he's well again I'm not, now. He's I'm not dying, yeah. yeah, he's not dying. <laughs> <at all. laughs> so yes, no problem at all. Uh, audio issues out of sync, are we? That always happens a little bit. That's just the way we work, unfortunately. It it changes with every show. Some are better than others. It's just we did get a bit of audio lag between us all. Um, yes, but trust us. Just don't don't do the lips, and we're fine. If we will do this. We'll be absolutely fine with that one. But yes, good, good, good job. And hello to everybody who's in the actual, oh my lordy, crikey, I've just clicked into it. YouTube chat is up and running, so I forgot to turn it on earlier, so I only just turned it on. Uh, so yes, very nice and high. Everyone's having good weather. Good evening from Plymouth, crikey, that's it, just up the road there, or down the road from me. So yes, very good. Uh, so usual thing, we're going to have a look around at some of your great work that be going on from the actual group builds and SIGs, because quite frankly, we haven't looked at them in over a week. We haven't got any planned out, so I thought we'd just have a general look round and things as we make our way through. Uh, if you haven't seen it, if I just clip over to the uh, web mode, uh, up on today, I'll put the photos up so everyone can see them um, of the completed Buccaneer, which we finished off yesterday, which very, very happy with that one. And then, yeah. Yeah, this is where it all went slightly, uh, may have gone a little bit wrong. Uh, last night I was on with Matt and I decided to attempt to scribe the um, one side only just to see how it went uh, with the T28. And to be honest with you, it couldn't have gone more wrong if it had tried. Um, what happened was in the famous Jeffro, which you guys probably wouldn't know who Jeffro is, but um, I basically thought we'd just do one side just to get ahead so I could show you of doing the um, raised panel line rescribing, which to be honest worked really, really well. Apart from because the squares are quite small, that the primer coat peeled off. So I ended up with it just peeling off and coming away and it looked absolutely horrendous on it. I can show you a little bit on the close-up camera if it's going to work. To be honest, I've got a new camera coming because this camera is not very good. But I've rescribed that entire side. So all of these have been put back in in raised detail and these on here. Okay, and I haven't done this side yet. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait till tomorrow afternoon and I'll re-put in all the detail on here so it's into here and talk to you the fantastic steps I took to do it because in my infinite wisdom I panicked a little bit so 
basically tried the rescribing to this one which is basically a sharp knife and just cutting through it and all the rest of it it started to peel off and then it was like right okay so then i put some um rapid um drying thinners on it and it just all melted and turned into a mushy horrible mess uh, and then we left it and it's actually come back quite nicely so it's worked actually better than i thought it was going to and then i just gave it a basically a gloss back coat trying to stabilize it because i was just worried about the primers just letting loose but as you know this thing's had a couple of coats of paint now it's had about four coats of paint and everything was just turning it was one of those ones where it was just getting worse and worse and worse so what i'm going to do is tomorrow afternoon we'll settle down get the cameras all set up and i'll show you about doing it on this side and if it does it again which is more than likely to i can show you about putting um thinners right the way over it and everything trying to stabilize it and then going over it like that but actually it's turned out really nicely and the challenge will be if i can get that side to look as good on this side which is always a thing when you do half at a time it's trying it looks to like it got a, looks like you got stressed skin yeah it mm. does it's actually come out really really nicely i'm quite happy with the look of it it's just that i'm now paranoid i'm not going to be able to do the same on the other side so you only be able to look at it from this side because this side would be a total mess but what I'm going to do is, as I said, I'm going to keep it back. We'll do it tomorrow afternoon when we'll be doing the tomorrow afternoon show. And we can get the cameras all set up nice and close. And we'll go through and we'll show you all about it. If you can't watch it live, don't panic. It'll be a recording and you can see it a little bit later on. But that was my fun and games last night when it was just one of those. Wherever I did to it, it was going worse. It was getting worse with every single thing I touched it. Until the point I'm thinking, well, if we put some lacquer thinners on, I'm thinking it will eat into all the coats of paint and it will self-stabilize and it was just falling off. It was running off of like we had the stuff everywhere. It was horrible. But Al um, Alan, Alan, Alan says, Andy, stop laughing. I'm not laughing at Phil. I'm just laughing with him. That's it. Well, the thing is, I don't mind. I, I, <laughs> As I say, it's never bothered me. I know a lot of people and they get really frustrated when these things happen, but I'm, I'm more of one of these people who's like, right, that's just work the problem. You know, it's the old Apollo 13. Don't make it worse by sort of messing around with it. <laughs> just work it out. Just do whatever it takes to get it back. And again, like, you know, Matt was saying at this point, normally it would go in the bin, but no, we'll be all right. It'll be fine. It'll be, you know, convinced it will still be good if I can work out what colors it is as well. But hopefully the decals are on their way now at last. So that's good. So the decals will be here for that next week. So we can go along, get that one finished off. Same will go for the MiG-23. All the stuff I was waiting for to come on that one, that's all on its way as well. So I'm hoping, because we've got Easter now, so technically that's it. There's no delivery is going to be tomorrow or Monday. So it's going to be Wednesday or Thursday next week before those come in. But once they do, we can then push on with those ones and really get them out of the way and go through. In the meantime, I will be starting on the 2001 Space Odyssey. So that'll be the next one up as I work through that one. So yes, good. How's your tail sitter, Andy? I ain't got one. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just uh, change camera angles. It's, I think it's because I've put the undercarriage on, but I've not put the wheels on. And it's just like sitting back on the, uh, oh my God, where am I? There, it's just sitting back on the, on the undercarriage. So it's like, you know, tail sit in a bit but it's um it's getting there how much weight did you put in it or did you just chuck a load in i chuck loads i put loads it doesn't tell you how much put in i put loads in i even built a plastic card um box that goes underneath the uh, to go underneath the cockpit mm -hmm. filled mm -hmm. that with the lead weight and i put a load of lead weight at the where did i put it yeah in the nose section under here yeah put loads in it but it just i don't know so if it's on blue tack to bring the the level up to where the wheels would be, it sits perfectly. Okay, so, so hopefully it'll be all right, unless the nose wheel, of course, is just as big. That's not. It's a dead tiny one. And that's <laughs> it. Will be. He's going to sand a flat spot in it until it levels <laughs> out. So yes, so flat, flat, flat nose wheels. <laughs> it will be fine. Anyway, as you can see, Nathan's doubled. So yeah. Nathan's done his. If I just press and I mute, it should be fine. There we go, look, part three, because we forgot to put it up yesterday, to be honest with you, apologies, Nathan, I forgot to do it. But uh, we've got part three of the tornado build is going up as we speak. Yep, part four's about a third half of the way through. Yes, very good. Look, let's watch your captions and see if it's okay. <laughs> it's <just fun>. <laughs> <laughs> It's, it should be all right in my Queen's English. Yeah, that's it. Best. <laughs> well, I could tell you had your posh voice on, clearly. Yeah. <laughs> 
But no, again, Nathan, if I just pull it forward a little bit, but Nathan's gone to great lengths to show you exactly the pitfalls and what to avoid and little tips and tricks to put together the uh it's the intakes and then around the actual um uh the engines at the back isn't it and there's a couple yeah. of little areas which as i say you picked up on that bit of flash running across the toppy bit isn't it from the oh, the join but i must admit because you took it off with a razor saw on that which was ingenious because i didn't think of that when i did it i just hacked through it but where you cut it off with a with a razor saw to get that part cleanly off, that was far nicer than what I did to it. So, Still, it all went a little bit wrong. Still for me because I'm rushing to uh, get keep these coming out like once a week. I'm going at at a pace. Yeah. So yeah, I mean it's just it's a spine of a kit in that part, and the intakes are just horrible. I tell you what's good, um, and it's something I can learn from you on this one. You do your filming a lot closer than I do, and you can see the pitfalls in the Revel kit, like the flash on it, and mm. the quality of the the moulding, the yeah. way it's not as sharp. Um, if I just pass along, the end is the best one because you can see how bad it actually is. In when you're working on the tail section, uh, where's the bit with the nozzle at the very back? Is that along here? That's still the front. Yeah, this bit in here, mm. if it'll just go, that's not a good point. Hold on, where is it? Uh, one of these in here, you show it sort of, you can see, I know we've got various parts when that disappears, um, but you can actually see the, well, if we just play it, where that speed brake, how it doesn't really fit in there because it, it's quite soft on the edge. Yeah. you know and obviously on the other side it's got big gaps in it and that's typical and obviously down the back here where you've got that seam running across and it's how the it's quite softly molded and it just sort of dissipates it's not like a yeah. clean crisp edge that you'll find on tamiya kits and i always say that's the thing with Ravel kits because they're a little bit more softly molded that you know you get those little gaps in there which are really really annoying because they can turn into quite major problems for people especially yeah. if they try and correct it by putting in filler and that because then you you know you just make an extra work for yourself whereas like you've said to go in there and to get rid of the flashy bits squaring things off really i'd call it uh, and stuff like that but it's funny looking at it that close you can see really how oh, what if a better word how horrible the kit is it's definitely not a Bandai or Tamiya kit and all the rest of it, you know? So I think it's just one of those ones. It's quite nice to sit back and see somebody else doing it close up. And you could think, yeah, that's not a nice join and a fit. So like you did on that one, especially going around, making sure it's square, good butting up edges and stuff like that. And really how essential it is to make it seamless in a lot of ways, you know? I think the way I'm building this is... I'm choosing where the problems are. So I'm making sure that any bad joint, I think you have to choose where the bad joints are going to be. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think that's the, the whole way I've approached this kit is I've chosen where I want the good joints, mm -hmm. start with those and then just let it all sort of cascade underneath. Yeah. But it's the same problem with any Ravel kit. I mean, part four, you're going to see it. It's got bits of plastic card in it, trying to tidy up that mm -hmm. where where the camera is now, tidying up that speed brake joint. I've just had to wedge some plastic card in there because yeah. speed brake's too small mm. on that side only. And th this is one of the things where if you build another Revell Tornado, you probably have no problems. No, because you've got a good one. Mm -hmm. I think that's. I mean, I've built a few of these now, and I've had one that was just beyond use really ended up bidding it started on the next one and it, it all it went together really well so i think there's a quality control hmm. with Ravel, which is similar to what airfix have had a couple of hiccups haven't they yeah, yeah. It, it's it's brilliant when it's in cad mm -hmm. it's okay when it's in the tooling stage it's in the manufacturing of the actual plastic that we get in the boxes where the problem comes in yeah that's brand new tooling ish Mm -hmm. Shouldn't have any flash on it whatsoever, should it really? Especially with computer computer aided manufacturing, it should yeah. not have the tight. I mean, you've got older kits with less flash. And Again, I think it, it it's either shall we say uh, cheaper tooling, where as we know that the molding isn't 
perfect, you know, and it's allowing those sort of, you know, tolerances, shall we say, they're a little bit warped that are mm. causing it. Or as you say, it's the actual, the injection molding with the plastic isn't properly getting into all of those last minute edges and corners inside the mold. Because again, looking at yours, when I've, yeah, you know, I watched this one this afternoon and I was, you know, looking at it quite closely and thinking, I don't remember mine being as bad as yours. Generally, the kit, your kit looks more ropey than I think mine did, but I did mine a while ago. But I went back and had a look at some of the bits on mine and like with those speed brake areas and things like that, I don't think mine was quite as bad. Uh, and yeah. some of the gaps you've had on yours. And I'm, I am wondering, perhaps it's a, a cheaper mold and then you've got the problems where, the, you know, the tooling is just wearing out and that's why you're getting a lot of these. You know, this kit's been done couple of i don't know how many thousand ones they've stamped out of it but uh it may be down that line which doesn't bode well for future releases at this point if it's yeah. getting worse now pretty soon it's going to be you know wearing out and as i say i'm pretty sure these companies don't redo the tooling once they're done they're pretty much done but no uh, don't all them no i mean that's definitely the case with the 72 one hmm. if you're going to buy a 70 second revel tornado get a second hand one the plastic will be better yeah it's because there's they're getting really really flashy yeah but I, I just get a funny feeling the factory where they're made is just on a on a clock mm -hmm. and i'm not maybe they're just not if the tooling is working too fast and it's getting hot it's ex i think that's where the problem might be is they're just See, them also out. as well i know i'd say i've got a friend of mine who's he does injection moldings what he does for a living and uh, he was saying sometimes as well if they're removed from the mold too quick and the the actual um the styrene hasn't properly set it can get what they call tear as it's being pulled for you know injected from the mold um mm. and he says sometimes that's where you can get ejector pins as well the reason they're very deep is because the plastic is still soft when it's being injected from the mold and it hasn't had time to solidify and cool rigid to get out so he says sometimes when you'll see it on the kits uh and you'll get you know to be honest kitty hawk are prone to it in the old days where the ejector pins have basically gone through uh and he said that's because it's being ejected from the mold way too quick it's not having time to properly dry and also he was saying sometimes you can get it tends to happen more around the sprue but as you were saying, it can happen on the parts as well. But you get the tearing where it's being pulled out and it bows slightly before it pings off and releases. And you can right. get it where it causes damage to the part as well when it's doing that. So, but yeah, but it's quite interesting seeing yours and going through it and the, some of the problems you've got on there. But I'm just looking at the fit the parts thinking, I don't mind remember mine being that bad, <laughs> you know. Uh, but I went back and had a quick look at mine You say if you look at mine it doesn't look to be as bad as yours and that, that got me thinking then perhaps because now it's obviously been around a bit that tool in it's beginning to wear and it's showing through to the modeler but as you say it might be worth looking for older kits at that rate so anyway but no good job on that one but anyway that'll be up and what I'll do everyone for if you are a, uh, a non-member as well uh, I'll put it out onto the main site as well. At the moment, it's on the actual one internally uh, in the forum. It's down in there. But again, what I'll do is I'll get that one sent out and I'll put it out on tomorrow for the Friday roundup. So it'll be out to the world as well. And we'll get uh, it set up into its own little section as well. So people can follow on with that one because it is an absolute fantastic job. Done a good job on that one, mate. Thank you. I was transfixed to the subtitles reading them as you were. Uh, Are they any good? <laughs> Yeah, they looked all right, actually, yeah. <laughs> There's a couple bad. of bloopers in it, but yeah, they looked, looked all right. <laughs> I think they've got, they're putting, it's like machine learning, isn't it, how it's doing it? It's like yeah. amazing that they can do automatic subtitles. It is, when they, especially when you do it live. It amazes me they do the live stuff. How does it do that? I like to try and catch it out. <laughs> so, yes. But if anybody's got any questions, usual bits and pieces, what we'll do is have a quick look around the forum and then we will um, shout out. And if you guys want to ask us, say it's quite an informal evening this, uh, this evening, I'm not planning on actually doing any building work as such. So we can just go through everything and cover everything like that, really, and go through. It's so, just they're asking about how to find Nathan's build threads on the uh, forum. Uh, at the moment, if you go into, I've just pinned it. If you go into Jets, work in progress Jets, earlier on i did pin it so if you go into the forum clicky at the top go down to work in progress jet aircraft 
into here. Um, do you, is this it? 48 scale? Oh, yeah. it? And it's at the top. Pinned. Did it earlier. So if you just go in there, and Nathan's already stacked them as well. So if you go into, if I go first page, because obviously it's That's out. Uh, yeah. Uh, he's stacked them at the beginning. So you've got parts one, two, and three are in there. But again, we'll sort him out with his little area. We'll get it put over to the thing. If Nathan can do a couple of thumbnail photos and send them over to me, I'll make sure they're in the actual video build area as well. But at the moment, I have pinned it to the beginning of jet aircraft. So if you just go into 48 scale jets, uh, go into jet aircraft, 48 scale jets, work in progress area. It's the first one at the top because it's pinned up there. Um, and then underneath, you've got my one for uh, some Harrier thing I did. and an F1. Yeah. Anyway, so there we go. It's all pinned at the top, so you guys can grab it just in there. But I will get it out into the main site as well, and you'll be able to watch to your heart's content out there as well. Right, okay. So if we have a look-see at, because we haven't been in here for a while, the Latin group build, which finishes on the 30th of June. Uh, it hasn't been affected totally by the uh, virus quite yet okay so alan done a fantastic digital look at that it's quite cool isn't it that's, that's that in it. Very cool. really nice that has so this is the hobby boss one i take it yeah hobby boss super tucano uh done in this one with the brazilian markings yeah. that looks really cool it is. yeah very nice very nice i like that i like actually i really like the color scheme as well because that's that mm. sort of you know the um old sort of euro one -y type isn't it with the darks yes. and the you know with the blacks very nice very cool because to be honest i always think that kit's not that good but you guys have been knocking it out of the ballpark with that one very nice this looks really cool with the pave white bombs strapped with Takano. i know that's it yeah <laughs> we're not used yeah, to look, seeing like that UK. pave ways what are they, GBU 16s on that? Jesus. I forgot the differences between them. <laughs> we used to see them in like red and red and white with nothing strapped to them, aren't we? No, that's it. Okay, so down in here we've got a, um, this is the Kitty Hawk done by Gordon. Super Etendard. Very nice. That an Exocet missile on it. Has it got one Exocet? Yeah. Fantastic. Nice indeed. Very cool. That is very nice. Oh, look. Oh, that was cool. Yeah. Look at that. Very nice. Cool job. I like that. Again, it's really nice to see because obviously the Kitty Hawk one can be a bit of a handful, but no problem with that one. Done a good job on that one. Okay, so what else have we got? Uh, we've got. God, how do you pronounce that? A Berg Panzer. Berg Panzer. Berg Panzer, yeah. So this is the Tacom 135th scale done by David. Look at that. Very nice. Nice weathering. I like the yeah, blade, the way the bit. weathering's done on the blade. I'm just going to call it the bit on the front. <laughs> <laughs> See that? that weathering spot on, isn't it? It is nice, isn't it? Yeah, that looks well used. It does. I like the weathering on that. It's got that nice sort of worn, dusted down look to it all. Very good work. And even the anti-slip. That's good. Because those things would get a lot of hard work, wouldn't they, really? You imagine so, yeah. Mm-hmm. Area in front of the vehicles, aren't it? Very oh. good. <laughs> We are, David. We're very impressed with it. Nice job. Tommy Rich was thin on his finger. <laughs> you know what? That's a happy accident right there. That. Absolutely. Like I always say, if no one knows, it's perfect. <laughs> okay, so we've got 32nd Italeri Mirage 3E. Uh, again, very nice. Look at that. The old Brazilian markings on that one. I always want to say South Africa when I say that, but no, it's Brazil. Yeah. That's nice. Very nice. Say so trouble when they're big, it's photographing them. Yeah, they don't get big enough that from. Step away and zoom in, that's how I do it. <laughs> I like that. 
again, the weathering, it looks serviceable, but it looks used. Yeah, that's right. It's worn. Mm. Used, but not abused. I, must admit, I do like that. Very nice that's indeed. So you don't see many of those built. No. No. That's it. Well done, Tom. Very nice on that one. Okay, so what else we got down in here? We've got Mirage 1 from Gordon. Uh, this is 72nd. The that's gentleman's be, scale. Proper scale. A, that's a brilliant camo pattern. It is. This game, that's amazing. Very nice. Very nice indeed. Nice. This The nice thing with all of these is they're colourful, you know? And yeah. that's why, in some ways, when we were talking about these ones and coming up with the idea with you know south american ones you know it's going to be some nice good you know colourful kits out there yeah gordon's on a complete roll he's got enough for a squadron a here, isn't he? Isn't he? <laughs> andy how's your one coming along have you finished it yet <laughs> nearly <laughs> so there we go this is the amk 72nd one that andy says is unbuildable <laughs> On build, it would be better if it was 48 scale. <laughs> He's not used to doing these smaller aircraft. <laughs> Very nice. Good job. Okay, so we've also got down in here a kinetic. A lot of kinetic stuff. We've got Super Etendard. This is the kinetic one this time. I think we've looked at this one because we're dropping through, which means normally we've already seen it. Again, and the other one for your references. <coughs> Again, a bit like buses, <laughs> sort of kits all dropped in at once. You have multiple choices with that one. Yeah. So yes, I think we're up to date on that one then. Well, look, we'll just have a look at the AMX from Steve, because I don't think we've seen one of these. Very nice indeed. The Hobby Boss 48 AMX. It's nice to see the different colour schemes and markings to what we traditionally see, though, isn't it? And everyone was doubting it and naysayers when we first announced it but hmm. it's been good to see the different stuff yeah yeah and again i know you know sometimes we get criticized for shall we say some of the group builds we do but a lot of it is is that it's to i think we've seen this one because it's dropping through a lot of the time sometimes it's just to push everyone's envelope a little bit yeah mm. we have seen that one that last week but, you know, there, there is a little bit of method in the madness because what we want to do is inspire you to try something new. And in that case as well, South American colour schemes aren't your usual greys or your normal greens and stuff. So it is that thing of trying different camos and working with different, you know, nations, aircraft, weapons, loadouts and stuff like that. And it's not just all about aircraft because obviously there's a lot of armour in there. And we were saying there's a lot of Cold War armour made its way down to South America as well, which is currently used. So it's a good way of getting people to do stuff they've never done before and uh, just pushing people slightly out of their comfort zones to have a go at something. So if we just pop down in here, I think the rest of these are all up to date now. I think we've seen all of those which we have so well done guys absolutely fantastic so that's what's going on in there at the moment we've got currently uh let's put it back into here um oh, sorry let me dive down to the thing we'll put the group builds at the top it'll save my scrolling forever <laughs> um so uh so obviously on this one you've got until uh, the 30th of june to get them all finished so you've got a couple of months and loads of times on your hand uh, for that one so we've got 100 currently uh work in progress on that one don't forget everybody who completes not only do you get a fantastic video showing your great work at the end of it you'll get a medal as well so you'll actually get your medal going through on that one so um that's see if we get that one converted over we've got 27 finished at the moment be great if we can pull that one across traditionally it's usually our quietest group build of the year but there we go we'll see how that one goes uh next up we got the mig so obviously you've literally now got quick do the maths um to, uh, carry the one what 21 days left on that if you count today yep. <laughs> as quick as my maths goes uh so anyway uh, there's only a little bit of time left on this one so we've got 106 entries into this one and we've got 40 finished so this was the mikayan uh one that we did if i click on new it should bring up the new ones so we've got the great war hobbies mig 29 
Bloody hell, Gordon. You really oh, are an oldie, aren't you? <laughs> it's, it's, but that's really it's, nice. It's, with it's clap, clap time, Phil. Oh, is it? Yeah. I can. We're going to spare a moment for a quick clap for all the people. <laughs> all are you? Um, my house is... Is it? Pots and pans and all sorts going out. I don't know quite what they're doing. Well done to everybody. Including everybody who's staying at home and doing your bit as well. It's Alan clearly says, working because down here in the southwest, we're doing really well at this. Alan says it's Tam's home. She she needs to take a bow. I did say to her earlier she is. She had today off, and I have said to her to come and take a bow. But yes, she'll uh, and she, never. And she said, "Come in." What did she say? I can't repeat it. <laughs> Let's just say she spends enough time at the coal face dealing with all of this, so she's enjoying a nice day off and putting her feet up, and probably watching some murder on the telly or something. So, uh, but yes, but no, thank you to everybody who's doing everything. It's obviously, it seems to be working. And Boris is out of uh, ICU, isn't he? Yes. Yeah, I think so. So, what, um, what, what did we say when he, when, was it Nathan said he's out of ICU? <laughs> yeah, to the morgue. <laughs> 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 but no, for everyone who's not in the UK, if you're understanding, they're doing this thing. It's called Clap for Carers. So it's for yeah. everybody who's like for our health service and for everything really i think at the end of the day it's just our way of making a bit of noise and a bit of appreciation for everybody who's still going out to work still working hard and doing everything right the way through to like the bin men and everybody who's going out making sure we're still going but they say about clap for nhs and carers i think it should just be for everybody really because it doesn't matter if you're like in the supermarket you know if you're yeah. doing I, it I think, neat, you know it's i think i think a lot of countries are doing the same thing yeah yeah so, started yes. in italy didn't i think or something I think oh. so, yeah. yeah yes they do it as well in the states apparently yeah so yes but no very good i couldn't clap loudly or hard because i'll spike me mic <laughs> and it will trust me you don't want it to do that because it, either it'll cut out completely or whatever i'm acutely aware it kills my microphone if i do it it will peak it but no but thank you to everybody who's doing well and thank you for you guys for joining us and watching us and all those things because it is it's a good old thing we're all enjoying doing it keeping everybody out of the way and happy and they do it in holland as well they do it everywhere it's fine okay so uh where are we dee, dee, dee. i'm just watching over there i don't know quite what that means oh yeah sorry i've got a little thing flashed up on my screen i'm just trying to work out what it is okay so anyway mig 29 in the digi another one another one it's been yeah. quite popular in the digi isn't it and it's got the tiger there, on the tail yeah it's cracking hidden, into it hidden in the digi here it is isn't it very good very nice indeed congratulations good job on that one and uh so mig 15 48 scale classic tamia kit saw this one earlier this yeah i saw this it was nice as well beautiful work sorry who was this this is uh min love like the, the metal work that's I like the color it's nice real decent looking color isn't it and yeah. also the red it's got that nice solid look to it as well actually that's yeah, really very very nice job on that nice and say the metal work's got that proper i don't know it's the texture of it you know me i'm very much into my you know sheens and finishes and that just looks spot on to me yeah very nicely done let's say what he's painted it in if it's a hold on oh, i'll have a look in this thing there we go it's a great kit i've built a couple of them over the years there we go i was going to say i wondered if you'd done the engine but yeah Beautiful work, nice job on the engine as well. I think what's nice as well is the markings, the red stars. They, mm. they, they're yeah. on, they don't look like they're stuck on, it's yeah. all tied together nicely. Yeah, no, it does very nice on there. Hold on. So that was with uh, Tamiya XF Green, Light Green. So it's Rattle oh, Cans. Bare Metal Silver. There you go. Okay, nice okay, job extreme. yeah very good excellent job well on that one mint that we like that one that's a cracking build that is okay mig 23 hey look see 
can't go wrong with the MiG-23. There we go. So this is from uh, Mike, and this is the, uh, whose kit's this? RV. RV, who's so RV? 72 scale. They're, they're kind of in the sort of KP end of the thing, like small oh, right. scale. Okay. Got you. Yeah. Whether the, yeah, that's nice. It is. Yeah, very. Uh. Very nice. Start a, again with all the 72nd ones I've never seen somebody who's really nailed the cockpit I don't know why it always looks slightly off Just, but that doesn't look too bad looks alright from that angle so yeah cool like that love the colour scheme really nice nicely weathered in as well and again it's 72nd beautiful work very cool okay so and we have uh, MiG-17 from Martin here we go so this is the Airfix 72nd one yeah. in the Polish markings very nice very cool. cool Polish blue very nice had some good entries into this one I must admit Mm. Okay, it's Vesda, 72nd. What is it? It's 72nd at the moment. It's going wild. It's the future. We've started something. That's it. So we've got the Zvezda. <laughs> this is from Keith and it's the uh, MiG 3. COVID building, do a MiG <laughs> in 72nd. <laughs> That's it. Very nice. Excellent job. Very good indeed. Okay, and uh, what else we got? Oh look, AMK 148 scale from Phil. This is the uh, MiG-31. Here we go. Nice with the crew detail as well. A bit of ground crew going on. Weapons loaded. Gives it scale. The wheel yeah. up. Yeah. Nice base as well with the patch and the various bits and pieces as well. Very nice. Very, very yeah. nice. Good job. Very cool. Nice paintwork on that one as well. Do, do, do. There you go. Nice ladder. Although it's a hell of a step for him up, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That last step's a big one. Careful how you get out, sir. Okay. Well done, Phil. Beautiful work. Okay. So, uh, where are we? MiG-31. MiG-21s. Have a Lancer. There we go. That's nice. So, this is... Whose one's this? This is the Eddard. 148 scale. Very nice. Classic. That's what I'm building. What markings are you doing yours in? Um, same, I think. Okay. Mm -hmm. oh, very nice. I like that. Pilot figure looks good in there as well. There you go. Very nice. I'm going to have to build one, you know. Never built the Edar MiG-21. Goes together really nicely. Yeah, that's it. Okay, one more. Let's have a baby one. From Alex. Yeah, I don't think we actually saw this one, did we? I think it's probably one of the last ones we've seen. So this is the 72nd Eddard one again. And again, beautiful work. Very yeah. nice. Crazy camo scheme. And special markings. It, it is, yeah. There you go. Dinky little thing. Dinky, dinky ones. I tell you what, they've really cornered the market. Were well, they 144, 72nd, 48? They might as well just bring out the 32nd to be done with it. Yeah. <laughs> Cover the market. <laughs> very nice, very cool. I like that. Very cool. Again, it's one of those ones, classic aircraft and all the rest of it, and special markings just makes it extra special very good indeed so congratulations there alex that's one's an absolute beaut look we'll leave it on the screen for a minute so mm -hmm. it can take pride of place 
just there. Cool. Right. Okay, then, guys. If you've got any questions, you want to have any shout-ups or anything else like that, make yourself known now. Post them up, and we'll read them out. Just to let you know, I have done the review for these, which is the Dismay. Uh, there we go. This is for the cutters, the number threes. I've done the review for it. Hold on. Let's just stick it in here. And, um, yes, these are the new ones. So I've done a side-by-side -side comparison with my old ones to these ones because the old ones are the Mark II. This is the Mark III. Uh, I've done the review for it. It'll be up with you tomorrow. I'll pop it up about midday. And I have to say, these are pretty much identical to the God's Hands ones. That's all I'm going to say. But it's not all, all a perfect review, I have to say, because I have gone right the way through and explained what happened to my old ones when I broke them. As you can see, there's a big hole in the blade. So I've told you all about that and the downside to these things and the upside to them. But actually these, hand for hand, blindfold test, I can't tell the difference. They That's even heresy. Do... I know, you I know what you're saying. I plugged it down. But these are only 35 <laughs> quid. And these were how much? I can't remember how much of these were now. About, seven They're quid about 35 time. quid in Japan. It's just yeah. when they come over here, they get pricey. Yeah. But yes, but um, the lovely people at Brevco sent me these ones over. So I've done a full review of it. It's quite a long review. It's about 20 minutes, 25 minutes on it, talking about it. But I do explain how I broke my old ones and what not to do. Because in typical Flory fashion, it is one of those things. To say as I say, not as I do. And I ended up killing mine. But there again, I've taken the ends off of these as well. So I'm not doing bad. But um, these are absolutely beautiful. This is the new Mark III uh, version of it. And they are absolutely gorgeous. And the best thing about these, I have to say, is the uh, unboxing experience. Because these boxes are proper, you know, the rock hard. And it is, it's that proper iPhone moment when you undo it. So they are very, very nice indeed. But anyway, the full review with these ones will be up going through. And I've shown you all about how to use them. Which sounds weird, but there is an act to them and everything else. But they are very, very nice indeed. So those will be up with you tomorrow as well. But we were looking at them earlier, weren't we? They do look closer to the God Hands than they do to the original yeah. display they, ones. It looks like they've changed the metal. That's the biggest one. I've got the original pair here. And these, well, I don't know. It just looks like it's different. It looks the same metal as they use in these. There is obviously some key differences. Like the God Hands one still has the blunt, um, so you can't overbite it, where the other one's still a pin, which would be better if it's blunt. And the retaining bolt on the top, this one's actually got a proper bolt, where the others have just a, a shim of metal. So it'd be better to have a bolt, but you could pull them out and put a proper one in if you wanted to. But um, yeah, but I think for 35 quid, I think they're 40 euros, which is about 35 quid in our money as of today. Um, they are very, very nice. So but anyway, the full review for that will be up with you tomorrow. I'd say I'll put it up probably mid-morning, something else like that. So, Roger, Roger says, are we stocking them? <laughs> to be honest, I think there's a bit of a world boss, worldwide yeah. shortage um, because Brevco are out of them already. They haven't got any. They had a low came in. I've had one of them. They've all gone. So, But they're don't, not sure when they're getting their next lot in. Again, there's, I don't know, as I say, I'm only hearing this third hand, but apparently shipping costs have gone up because it's very limited on flights going around the world at the moment. So if you do want to sh send things by air, it's a lot more expensive than normal and there's various things going on. So don't know. But as I say, if you can get hold of a pair, I highly, highly recommend it. Lynn's got, Lynn's got a question, Phil. Yeah. Phil, how do you fix a problem with AK Extreme Metal Paints? Do you sand it back and repaint or what? I'm wanting to fix my P51. Uh, if you made a complete hash of it um, with Extreme Metals, then stripping it, possibly you could, but you would need, I would recommend their Extreme Thinners or Cleaner. That will strip it. Enamel thinners will strip it as well to a certain extent, but it's a bit of a hybrid enamel or something else in it. It's not just an enamel. Um, but again, it's one of those, I think it might be easier to sand it. Lightly sand it so you key in the surface and go over it, uh, and you should be fine with that one. So, yeah. right, just a problem with the problem with the wingtip. Oh, if it's only a wingtip, I'd sand it, definitely. If it's localised into an area, just sand it, absolutely. I wouldn't mess around. I don't know, what would you guys do? I'd just sand it, yeah, and sand it. mask yeah. it and use it as a 
different panel. Do you know what I mean? Even maybe do it as yeah. a slightly different shade That's or something. The accident. Yeah. Wasn't the P51 wing painted? Yeah, they are. Yeah, they're oh, yeah, yeah. they're filled and painted anyway, so they're not metal. They're painted silver. Mm. The bodies are metal, but the wings aren't. So. So yes. Uh, Phil, as a uh, dog owner, do your pooch's hair find themselves landing on your paintwork? <laughs> Got to love your dogs. Yes, they do, to be honest. It's not Molly, because Molly being a uh, Springer, she gets shaved and it gets long, but she gets clipped, so it's not a problem with her. Lola's are quite big being a Labrador, so it's that sort of in between. But I've had dogs in previous. Uh, with shorter hairs, the smaller hairs, things like that, and it, they can get a bit airborne. One little thing for that is to run, if you've got an extractor, run your extractor for a few minutes before you start spraying, and then that way you'll pull them out of the air. So any that are airborne and stuff, like pet hairs and stuff like that, tend to get drawn out of the way. And when you've finished your paintwork, you know, if you've got your model over here and it's done, and it's sat in your spray booth, leave your extractors running for a good while until it's dry as well so any hairs that might be airborne and it goes for flint you know and dust and anything else like that doesn't go on your model through naturally falling down it goes straight in your extractor you know or you could just cover it over as well if you want to do it that way but when i do gloss work i normally run the extractors for a good sort of 10 minutes before i start spraying as well just to get anything out of the air so you don't get any particles as you're spraying it picks up and takes them with it uh, and stuff like that can I do a couple more? Yeah, go for it. Uh, Gordon says, Phil, Andy, Nathan, thank you for all you're doing to keep us entertained during these strange times. I keep getting chalky, chalky tide marks when I put decals on clear coat. It's probably the case. It's probably the acrylic one. Yeah. Um, with micro set and sole, what am I doing wrong? How can I avoid it? You're not letting it dry, dry enough. Yeah, what happens is, don't forget, micro set and sole, like most of them are a mild acid. So if the clear coat, because it's a wax as well, um, it, if it doesn't cure completely and it's a little bit soft, the acid, the enzymes in there will etch into it. So if you ever had that thing where you're looking at your, your model and you've got your decal and it's fine, but around the outside is a little white chalky line, it's where the acids have eaten into it. So it's literally that thing where the decal bits, it's evaporated off and done its bits, but it's sunk slightly in. And it happens as well if you're using just normal acrylics and that. You don't tend to find it with lacquers. I don't know. Do you guys ever had it with lacquers? But I've had uh, it with acrylic coats. Lacquers, no. um, where, again, it's I've done that thing. I've painted it and it feels dry and everything. And I've probably come in there a little bit too much. Um, there's a couple of things you can do. Obviously, don't put on quite as much of like the micro sole, which is the red one. Put a nice thin coat down so it evaporates quite quickly. If it's sitting there and pooling, it'll etch and go in. So you just want to be a little bit mindful of that one as well. Quite quite often, if you leave it, it'll go away. You know, leave it a couple of days and it'll yeah, it sorts itself go back out anyway. So. Yeah. The other way as well, if you have got it and you want to get rid of it, is to hand brush a very thin coat of clear over the top, and it will eat into the old one down below, and it will self level and sort itself out as well. Okay. He says, "Don't use extreme thinners; melts plastic faster than self leveling thinners." It's extreme nice thinners. Point. Which one's extreme thinners? Is that the one, that the AK one that he had. Oh, right, that one. What, the cleaner? Yeah, extreme cleaner. It's not really a thinner. It's an airbrush cleaner, isn't it? I think, do they do their own thinners? Do they do a thinner as well? I don't know. I thought it was just a cleaner, really, that one. Because it, you say it's a hybrid. It's, it is an enamel-based product, but it's not quite all enamels, I don't yeah. think. Another one from David says, Question for the team. I've heard that jets are better display in flight, while gear down is better for prop aircraft. Yeah. What else would one should one consider when making the gear up or gear down decision? What do you, what do you guys think? <clears throat> if I'm honest, I prefer, as a lot of you know, aircraft in flight. It's a bit like birds. Birds belong in flight, not on the ground. You know, it's where they belong and do. So that's why I like to do. Recently, I did the Tomcat in flight. I did the Hornet in flight. I even did the F thirty five in flight. Um, because I think they can look quite nice and that's why I'm doing the MiG-23 is going to be in flight as well. There's something about it in some aircraft naturally look, I think, better in flight than they do on the ground. MiG-23, definitely. 
Um, because again, it's got a gangly undercarriage and the tail's folded onto it. Whereas obviously I've got this one and obviously it has the tail down. Yeah, this tail normally when it's on the ground is folded 90 degrees up. So, you know, having something like this, we're gonna have it in flight with all its bits and pieces and have it all folded up. I think it just looks nicer. Some aircraft on the ground though, do look pretty good as well as folded up and stuff like that. Like the intruder, I mm. think looks quite good on the ground actually. Prefer it folded up on the ground than I do with it in flight. Um, and prowlers and things like that, I think look better. Uh, but certainly, you know, helicopters as well. I don't think they ever look right in flight displays because you can't do the blades. Mm, that's you the know. same with that prop aircraft and that's, and always that's into the prop business as well you know i think unless you're doing very small scales like the guy who did the was it the dc7 in yeah. flight the little tiny one that worked but yeah i, I think it, it is that thing trying to do them in flight depends a lot on your particular aircraft and what you want to do with it but props on the ground i think look always a little bit nicer but looking yeah. around at some of mine, it's like, I think all of them would look probably better in the air. <laughs> but yeah, some aircraft, I think, just look nicer on the ground than others. I think a lot of it also depends on the amount of space you've got to display things, isn't it? I mean, if you've got space, vertical space, where you can display things in the air, you mm. know, then fair enough. If you've just got a small shelf, then on the ground, it's, you know, what what suits you and what you what you got space for isn't it yeah i think sometimes as well you know like if for instance like with the a10 because i've done it with all the extras on and you you want to put that level of detail in then obviously you're going to have to have it on the ground because you want panels open and stuff like that if you're doing it in the air the argument can be made you might as well just build it straight out of the box because you're yeah. not going to see the cockpit so there's no mm. point using any aftermarket cockpit into it at all. And some aircraft you know, specifically are terrible. Like the Lightning is a classic example. I think Nathan will agree. If you've got the cockpit closed, you can't see anything inside it whatsoever. So there's no point putting any photo etch in there or resin cockpits or seats and stuff uh, that you go in there, especially if you've got a pilot figure sat in it as well. And if you're going to be in flight, you're probably going to need one. So all you're going to see is his head. So you know again i think it's that thing but then we did this little guy and then when you're doing things like this one when we were messing around with him you have to make the decision okay it's a naval aircraft so are you going to fold it up and the buccaneer i actually always think looks quite nice folded up you know it's one of those things some aircraft you can't see them particularly well um you know like naval aircraft if they've got the wings folded it hides a lot of detail sea fires i think are a classic example if they're folded up you can't see the aircraft so it's better to have the wings down, but again, it's personal choice to them all. But the Buccaneer, I decided to do it wings down because I thought it looked just quite nice and I'm really happy how it turned out in the end. I think it, it came along really nicely, but it's the type of aircraft that actually will look quite nice folded up as well. Andy's doing the Gannet and I think the Gannet looks really nice because it has a really odd fold system, the way it breaks in three or whatever it is uh, and does it like that. But other ones, I've got a Greyhound, um, not a Greyhound, a E2C uh, Hawkeye down there. That's folded up, so you can't see much of it. But it's a good thing because for storage, it takes up no room whatsoever. It's you know because again, being naval, they do fold up very small. If I did the 48th gun, I'd definitely do it with its wings folded. Mm. Um, if I could get hold of 48th gun, it map. <laughs> <laughs> But again, I think that's a classic example. The Gannet folded up, powered down, stowed. Looks really, really nice. You know, head on with that complex wing fold system. I think looks really nice. But again, no. I think it's it's personal choice with them all. But I always say like airliners look so much better in flight than they do on the ground. You know, if you have a, a plane, and that's when I did like the triple um, uh, seven that I did. No, one seven eight seven that I did. The Zvezda kit uh, a couple of years ago did that in flight as well. Because uh, I think it just looks nicer with those types of models as well. They don't look as good on the ground from a ground aspect. But again, like Andy says, a lot of it is down to space. If you've got the room and you've got nice lots of shells and can have them in flight or hang it off the ceiling or something, then it's pretty good. But if you haven't, um, then obviously in a display cabinet, it's the best bet with the wheels down and, you know, stowed. Yep. So, yeah. Just, uh, Two more out of this because the uh, holding onto the mouse button, holding the yeah, go on. <laughs> still, yeah. it's hurting my shoulder. Uh, Mark says entering the world of 3D modeling was eager to start today when my early view Mars was delivered this afternoon with no resin, despite being ordered together. Cheers, Amazon. 
that's why I've got the other. I've got the other Mars Pro, which is the upgraded version, which is the same really. Um, yeah, you'll have fun mm-hmm. trying to get your um, Rook initially the initial print that you get with it done. But yeah, it's, it's they're fun when you get going. Take ages there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, you do wonder where are we now? Then um, Dennis has said. Andy, Matt, your thoughts? I think it was on wing fold, um, in flight, not in flight. Not sure. Right, and just quick last one. Um, Phil T, where do you get your base uh, base display stands from? Uh, coastal kits. Uh, or we make them ourselves or this one I don't even know where it came from I was just giving it apparently it's a prototype type thing or something you bought a load of wooden ones off uh, eBay didn't you the yeah do these so this is the one that I'll be using for the MIG to be honest and I've got one of my logos which is going to sit on it somewhere it's going to sit down on there like that Uh, and again if you go on eBay and you put in like you know plinth bases things like this you can pay about i think a five or four them but if you look and buy 10 you can get them like 10 for 30 quid so share them with your friends or resell them or something else like that and you can end up because i think i bought 10 this is actually the last one so have it sometimes they've got the green bays on the bottom as well which is quite nice and you get them in different sizes and ovals and stuff like that but all finished off you can buy the raw as well uh paul's bases as a company down in torquay down the road from me um they make them as well um again sometimes the one trouble the ones i find that are in mdf and i've got a big one up there that the the, my 30 second tomcat is in flight it's on um again they need a lot of sanding and finishing to get them a nice nice yeah nice look i prefer like a mahogany base or something else like that rather than trying to you know sand and fill and everything in like an mdf one because the edges are a little bit rough i've got these because they're cheap Mm. you go to b and q if you you time it right they sell the off cuts for next to nothing and you can get them to cut me these b and q even cut them for me yeah not not at the moment though eh? not the moment (laughs) I'm sure hardware stores in the States must have a similar sort of um, cutting service. Yeah. Um, these were pennies, but you're right, they take a lot of work. I did blackboard paint on the first run of them, but that sort of scuffed a bit. So it was just, I don't know, it's, it's, bases are a tricky one, aren't they? We use sand, I've, one, one, a few of these, I've glued sandpaper on them. And use that as like a tarmac sort of base like really fine grit sandpaper yeah if you get like wet and dry onto it yeah yeah no good work in progress bases for me to be honest not mm. quite hit the sweet spot with them you can also do the thing where and i've done it before is um if you go like google earth get a runway a good quality one and then screen grab it and then print it off and i've done that before you know mm. depending where you are in the world because obviously the resolution is better in some places than others so i've done that in the before i've actually gone and got a screen grab uh of a, a chunk of runway and literally printed it and if you don't if you're doing something at 70 second then obviously that's just like an a4 sheet but if not luckily i've got a friend of mine who's got a massive printer and that's how we did the f16 in flight that f16 i had actually taken off yeah um or landing whichever one it was doing landing uh that was a friend of mine's big printer and we just put it through photoshop blurred it a bit and we've done it the one i did the f-16 taking off in flight with a semi-retracted undercarriage that was coastal bases i do believe is it theirs with the blurred runway yeah they do that yeah yeah, yeah i think it was um uh, uh, where are we? hold on we should have it half somewhere Coastal yeah. kits. Coastal kits, yes. Coastal kits. Thanks, Chad. Yes. Uh, which is, where is the F-16? There it is. So when we did the F-16 here, I if I've got a picture of it. Yeah, there we go. So, well, there's the acrylic rod. And, hold on, where are we? Web. You can see it down in the background. Uh, there it is. 
So that's the the sort of blurred and you buy that one and I just trimmed it up a little bit for the width for my base but again that's just a sheet of MDF drilled it and then uh, we popped it in to give it that look uh, of going through the motions of look like it's taking off because it's on a blurred base as well but again, you can pop it through Photoshop and get that look as well so um, yeah that's how we did that one but I was quite happy with that one because it's quite a a nice good sturdy base for it and it travels like that as well so roger says roofing foam makes a good tarmac base well, it depends on the grit <laughs> yeah you can get you can get thin grit yeah tarmac, uh, roofing for don't you no back cheap as well we're all up to date in chat look i'm just testing that thing it does work look everybody in chat on youtube gets Put over to the site oh, just seeing if it worked <laughs> right okay so i've got a couple in here as well uh hello from the czech republic hello uh hi chaps uh late for the show tonight could you tell us how to go about uploading pictures of your build cheers uh well david if you're on the uh forum and you're a member obviously you can upload directly in because uh, obviously we do our own photo hosting for membership so we've got a video on that one anyway which is we just go to the top literally usual thing if you just go up here and go into uh, hints and tips for use of the forum and then top one is videos and then just down in here it is one of these is all about there you go uploading and using photos uh, on there so you can have your own basically photo bucket account uh, and do it that way as well so you can just literally so if you watch the video in there it explains all to do it and everything else like that and resizing and all those things as well so you can just pop them up and use it in there that's probably the easiest way uh, will we ever see an SA330 Puma in 148 scale wish we would we mentioned that the other day didn't yeah, we yeah we're saying about yeah. Pumas are so overlooked unless you're going to go old school and there's plenty of old school kits out there it'd be nice to see a nice new one i'd build it it'd be nice you know i'd say we I've got the matchbox normal puma the old school one in 30 second but uh, it'd be nice to see a nice two, new tooled 48 scale one again it's one of those aircraft things overlooked because plenty of pumas and cougars out there in the world do the germans use them i think they did yeah there's like um i seem to remember like a glossy green police type markings hmm. on something yeah because there's a chance saw that revel might bring one out one day but very famously done by in rambo uh two wasn't it yeah. first blood no, the second uh, one yeah. where it was a puma and they put some stubby wings on it to make yeah. it look like a hind 24. <laughs> that sounds awful I can honestly say i never noticed before and <laughs> before i was told so <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh that's an entire show on its own talking through a rambo films yeah that's i think, quite I, was, a good I, think I was distracted by the bad bad acting to yeah, realize that's that. it <laughs> it's the bit where he stands he gets out of the huey and he gets the m60 and wraps the shells around his hands and says call everybody out apparently he was still yeah. on a box for that shot because he was so <laughs> short <laughs> So, uh, right, okay, uh, mind you, isn't that Tom Gru uh, Cruise and um, yeah. Kelly McGillis, wasn't it? Yeah. She had to sort of stoop a bit. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Owlclad 2 does seem uh, to be used or even talked about very often. Has it been outclassed by other brands or types? If so, why? That's quite an interesting topic because again i think it is it sort of went out of favor our cloud was everywhere wasn't it and then all of a sudden everyone just stopped using it and i don't know why because it was quite good stuff in its day because i used it in the like the 90s and noughties i still do it because it's been read well it's i'll have two into it now and it's all yeah. mega mega um, mega and everything on it it's that's a a fairly newish bottle mm. yeah it's also like yeah change but yeah I, I still use it occasionally it's nice to don't know. I, don't like I can't remember it. when i fell out of love with it or even why i don't know it just sort of i got onto extreme metals when they got released and that became my yeah. go-to metalizer paint because it's easy where i suppose with our clad if i'm honest 
it was so fragile. I used to wear yeah. through it. If you hold your model like this, I would end up going down to black primer underneath the edges, you know, and stuff well, like well, that. Wasn't it when you? Wasn't it when you went on to using more acrylics than lacquers? Yeah, I think as well. You that was it. The, I, I switched and... over and we went Vallejos and yeah, that's it. And those types of things really. But it is funny because they they now do all the colours, don't they? A bit like MRP. Yeah. But I've never used one. To be honest, I've never even seen one. Yeah. But, Can yeah. I just answer John say, John, if you um, PM myself or Phil and tell us what you want it changing to, we can change it for you. Has he got so a dodgy change name? Your, uh, you know, I want to change your build title in a oh. uh, build, type of the build in the thread. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just so hear me or Phil and we can change it for you. He should be no able problem. to edit it, I think. If you, you edit know, it. Can you pronounce the post from Alan just above it? <laughs> yeah, the Bundes green zugges. Yeah, the Germans <laughs> used them. Is that close? <laughs> Is that the Bundes Grenzschultz or something? I can't. I never did German at school. No, I mean, yeah. Yeah, Go on then, Andy. Move public. your camera around so we can see all your exotic paints. My exotic paints. Yeah. Well, so, Andy I'm says, can you give us a, a spin no. round? Look. No, let me just. Oh, oh, look, there you go. Oh. I got that. That this. It, it goes back about ten bottles. Yeah, fair. All these are all three D equal. Might be and yeah, that's a bit ridiculous, really. And then, but then this here is all literally full of paints and then all my Vallejo's now have been resigned to the cupboard up the side here. That's if, if, if his house ever went up in smoke, the black <laughs> column from it you'd see for miles and miles. Oh, is it tail sitting? Oh. <laughs> it's going to be photoed <laughs> from a special side so you can't see the <laughs> cocktail stick holding it up. <laughs> Blast. Stick a magnet in the nose wheel and put it on a bay. Yes, drill a tiny hole and stick a micro magnet in it. Have a small piece of um, glue Just tack underneath the front wheel. glue it. <laughs> yeah. uh, will week. the day ever come when Flory Models evolves for doing from doing sanders and washes into releasing their own paint range? Honestly, Gordon, I think there's enough people out there doing paint. Um, that is the thing. The past five years, I can't keep up. I'll be honest with you. Probably every six months, I get a paint manufacturer who will approach me and say, we can do a range of paint for you, which is what I assume all these other companies do because they all, you know, they're not coming out of their own factory, put it like that. So, yeah. you know, so I assume you could. I don't know what the costs are. I've never gone any further than saying no thanks. But <laughs> I, from my point of view, there's companies out there who can dedicate time to it. And I think that's the big thing where, you know, obviously it is me and the guys here, but it's me predominantly here, me, myself and I. So for me to dedicate time to do a paint range and to make sure it's all okay and it's all good and quality control and yeah, it's never going to happen. I've got enough trouble keeping up with the Sanders, to be honest. So Adrian's asked if I built and paint racks myself. Yeah, I just cut, I just, fair, again, being q I went with the measurements that I wanted them to all be cut um, and got being cute to pretty much chop everything up for me and then, yeah. Mm. And he gets good staff discount. Yeah. He's got all these dodgy bits of wood. He's got a dent yeah. in this, got a knot in this. <laughs> <laughs> you don't get knots in MDF. Well, maybe you do. <laughs> <laughs> it's got a stain on it. Not that anyone yeah. will see it, it'll be fine. Uh, would you consider doing a post World War Two US gloss blue 148 scale jet aircraft? I was never able to make it look right. I'm trying to think. I don't think I've ever done anything like in that color, but I know the one you mean, that nice gloss blue. But again, the Panther. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Well, that's the ones I was thinking. You could do like the Panthers. What's the other one? They did the Panther and the other little. Can't remember what it was now. That's the Night Fighter one, wasn't it? I can't remember it was the I something or other. Yeah. It's not my area of expertise that one. But yeah. Well, I must admit I was I have a plan still and it will never come off clearly, but I want to do the Diamondbacks history, the squadron. because uh, I've got still down here uh, my thing here. 
from your rhino that somebody got me so i've got all the patches and everything else for it and i quite fancy doing the history of the squadron right the way back from the first aircraft up to the uh using it on the rhino um so yes but nobody does a decent 148 scale one is it at the panther i don't know len said you feel bad she yeah i said no one does a decent one <laughs> you remember this one i bought this to your house you did i reviewed it i think didn't we is no, this the one that's been the, the paint you had trouble with the silver on that didn't it yeah it's still yeah it's, it's no, is it dry yet it, no to this day it's still tacky still comes off. <laughs> i reckon it's got a pigment problem with that. that that was extreme metal that was the first batch of extreme metal yeah it's obviously a dodgy batch yeah we've also got a sky knight graham says we do a sky knight and then brian says you could do a hobby craft hobby craft cutlass Ooh. there's a few options actually yeah, there's a few options yeah definitely I'll finish that one day. You have to repaint the silver bits first. Mm. But there's um, a stick coming up, that'd be perfect. I'll tell it. you what, you want to do is just give that a light rub over and stick a coat of um, LP11 on it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, how long do you need to leave lacquer paints between masking and colour change and priming and clear coat? From David. Depending on a couple of variables on that one firstly is it a gloss finish or is it a more flat finish okay because flat paints tend to go off quicker than gloss uh secondly is how thick is your paint if you've got a thick coat down there you want it to completely gas off apparently that's what they call it in the trade okay so the thing is if you don't give it a full time to go off when you put that next coat over the top you can get all types of problems not only can it peel if you mask it and it hasn't properly dried but also you can get cracking you can get crazing and everything else in between with it as well so you need to make sure they go off for lacquer paints if it's a nice thin coat if i'm doing multiple work as in layers and things like that so like when i painted this one this one's done in lacquers i basically gave it just a couple of minutes between coats okay but it's the same color going over it's the same finish and everything else all right so no problem but if i was going over this with perhaps something like a flat coat or we were using some other you know over the top of it i would probably give it just to be safe like 24 hours to make sure it's properly gone off before I would attempt to go over it with something else. Just to make sure you don't have the risk of it moving or still venting or drying or whatever you want to call it and stuff like that. I don't know, what do you guys do? I think it depends on what, again, what paints you're using, doesn't it? And what sort of like, you know, the properties of the paints are. Because, I mean, I'm, you get spoiled with using lacquer paints all the time. Hmm. And I painted this in MRP. Yeah. And literally, there would, yeah, I mean, well, I, I, I primed it in um mr surface 1000 with rapid thinners yeah and it was like pretty much yeah dry to touch straight away painted mrp again pretty much dry to dry perfectly straight away um clear coated it and then i went to put a matte coat on of using xf86 but we're, we're thinned with x20a mm -hmm. about two hours later I was, I was picking it up and i was leaving fingerprints in it yeah and i thought oh because if because I, I was used to the, using the lacquers all the time and it quit drying, yeah. and also the XF86 hasn't dried as quick, mm -hmm. it's taking longer to dry. Yeah, you know, it, it, it went away. It was perfect. Yeah, you know, just like you know, a couple of thumb size a prints. Of thumb prints in it. <laughs> Yeah. again it, it's that thing patience i would you know if you're just using the same colors and you're just going over the top then obviously i'm thinking realistically just 10 minutes and you'll be absolutely fine with it but as soon as you're changing out to a new color or a new type of paint with it or anything else then i would probably give it a bit of time to go off same goes with masking you know i will probably let it dry for a good couple of hours before i come near it to go masking or anything else but if i'm going to be deckling over it next i'll probably leave it at least overnight or 24 hours because i want to make sure it's properly gone off so if anything does go wrong it's not going to come back and bite me you know if something went wrong in the paint stage you could just rub it back a bit and just give it another coat and go again but um other things you know if it's one color like we did on this guy you know it's no problem you just keep building it up like we we're saying with andy and i know andy did the same 
using attackers I just sprayed one wing and then uh, it was only about you know a minute or two and then I just held on to the wing and sprayed the other wing so it is dry enough to handle and touch but that wouldn't be necessarily mean I would say right I'm going to mask over it straight away because it might peel it especially if that tape's on there for a while it's got a good time to bed in and also with masking tape if you're holding on to the tape say you've got masking tape on the wing and you're holding it the heat from your hand can soften the paint it can then make the tape adhere really strongly and then you go to peel it off and end up taking your paint with you and stuff like that and that's because you've been clamping onto it as well instead of just light handling shall we say so again there's a few variables in there but i would say patience literally patience um between it and you know we're all guilty of wanting to rush things and you know get things done but you could do with a bit of patience on these one of the guys is asking if you've used x how was it lp 70 lp 70 lp 70 which one's that gloss aluminium ah uh, gloss aluminium yeah no because i haven't got it that case, those colours come out since I've got mine. I only go up as far as 67. <laughs> so. Laura, I'm here paint. I don't know why we go asked if the lack of spray cans are being discontinued. Pass. I, I have heard that they have. Uh, That's why they're doing the LP range, but. But then again, you speak to other people and they're still doing them yeah because yeah. i thought originally quite like the guys are saying i thought the reason the lp range was coming along is because tamia wanted to discontinue doing the cans but mm. as far as i'm aware they're still available so i think it's just shipping them that people have issues with isn't it yeah yeah rob says phil it has to be jolly rogers not diamondbacks <laughs> no diamondbacks diamondbacks yeah their phantoms are absolutely fantastic and so yeah. are their tomcats to be honest and the F-18, I think they're all with everything with the red spine and yeah, look cracking. Yes, I've done the later one. I've done a Tomcat. I've done quite a few of the Super Hornets uh, in the various CAG markings as well. And I've done um, Tomcats, Phantoms and that. But I've not done the previous ones to it. But I'd like to build for myself, for my own little personal collection, their squadron. Be yeah. quite a nice one to do that of them all. Uh, do, 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 where are we? Uh, this is jumping around again, isn't it? Yeah, man. That's uh, Phil Fisk said he did email Airfix about a 148 Puma when mm -hmm. they did when they did their surveys. Got a positive reaction, but we're still waiting. Oh right, <laughs> we'll get Pranjit back on next week. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Strugger says, "Do you guys find perfect plastic, perfect plastic pulchy shrinks at all?" I do yeah. a lot of airline cabin window um, as I de decal them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And Don't find it shrinks it. back a lot. Any suggestions? Again, the thing it fills is, all the windows. Yeah. In and then all them. putties shrink. I, unless you're using super glue, they're all going to shrink. The secret with perfect plastic putty is don't put it on too deep but that's the same for any putty if you put down a good wad of it into a hole it will shrink but if yeah. you build it up slowly not only will it dry quicker um, but you, then you can overcoat it and go again and go again but perfect plastic putty prefers i think thinner coats going over it and to be honest with you i used it on this little guy here wasn't too much but also we did do it on this guy as well i used it all around the canopy because it wasn't particularly nice fit so we put it all around there and again light coat sand it back another coat sand it back you can do literally a coat every 10 minutes with this where you can't do that with the more hotter uh lacquer based uh putties and stuff like that so that's a quite the nice thing with it so again it's just getting used to and you know using it but i've done some quite major filler jobs with it but don't just put down a massive wad and try and slope it in one because it won't do it you're better off putting a thin coat onto it let it dry go again go again but again it will dry 10 minutes a time so it's really really quick to work with as roger says there's a video of uh, doing windows with pva it might be easier rather than trying to fill them just use pva rather than putting the decals on yeah well i'd say i always pva my round windows or square my record i think we've done what's it 14 mil yeah the is, um is my record for doing a pva window is 14 yeah. mil <laughs> yeah on the Dol dolphin one too yeah it was on the dolphin yeah. helicopter i did a square door window replaced it in pva glue piece of cake that's what the problem is <laughs> 
uh what have we got here how long do you uh what do you get uh the stands for where do you get the stands for in-flight models yeah same things like we're saying ebay just have a look on ebay for these types of ones if you wanted to do those ones that's the the easiest way to do it they always look quite nice and as I say there's companies and they make square ones round ones oval ones different size ones uh, that's the easy one as I say tomorrow I might even bend me acrylic so I might get the hot air gun out and we'll bend this into a nice jaunty angle as soon as I work out what the MIG's doing from the other MIG-21 because I want them to be the same but the other one's 260 miles up the road so I can't check and I don't ask Matt to draw me a picture of the angle because it won't be anything like it uh hi from dublin is there any tamiya or humbrol paint that would work for high speed silver yes there is keith <laughs> uh sorry kenneth i would highly oh. recommend tamiya's lp11 because i've been using it non-stop on almost everything i use these days um, it's number it, eight um nathan sorry it's number eight i think what in humbrol yeah. Like 11. yeah it is 11 is it yeah no it's it oh, yeah you're right what was eight can't remember now but yeah no it is 11 because it does mirror somewhat the old tamiya colors isn't it what was eight then i'm having a look now with my oh look <laughs> have a look number oh seven eight there isn't an eight mm -hmm. Nine. Eleven is silver. Yeah. All right. But no, I highly recommend LP11. If you want to have a look at it, I used it last time on the Gladiator. Gladiators. And that looks cracking, doesn't it? And it, it to be honest, these photos do not do it justice at all because they are crap. The proper photos, but um, in here. Uh, where's one of the silver got it painting it here we go um it looks better on this camera than it does on the other but it's a proper painty silver if that makes sense but it's got just enough hint of a shine and everything you, that you need you know it's actually a really nice it covers beautifully and it goes down but whereas tamiya's uh x11 the acrylic one is really gritty and the pigment is incredibly high this one is very very fine it, it's proper color for it it just really really works very very nicely matt and myself went down just before the plague started didn't we and yeah yeah see it in the flesh it looks miles better than it does on photos yeah photographing it is an absolute might it's like what i don't understand is why does it look like salmon pink or whatever it is on my thing because i'm looking at it yeah. now and it's brass <laughs> and it's got nice hues all over it but the camera just kills it it just can't yeah. take a picture of it because that looks horrible there but it looks fine in real life so but yeah that's what i would use now honestly for any type of high spill to silver now i would just use lp11 it's really nice it sprays beautifully goes down very nice dries really quickly you can decal over it no problem at all um you know and it, it once it's down it's down it doesn't go absolutely anywhere it's really nice indeed roger says that attacker silver is not bad uh just on a honda 750 you had trouble with attack silver though, didn't you yes yeah i must admit oh i tried it on the bear when i did the big bear um i thought right we're gonna do it in attackers i found it gritty but again if he's doing a bike in 1 16th scale, whatever they are, 1 12th, something like that, you might be all right. It might look like a metallic colour, but when you're trying to do it on a 70 second, it looked really gritty. So that might be the thing. On a bike, for a scale point of view, it probably works quite well with looking metallic y. But as I say, I tried it. It was going to be the base colour for the uh, TU95 Bear that I did, and it just, yeah, just didn't look right. It was gritty and, yeah, not, not nice at all and do, 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 late joining when you getting ak primer gray i don't know when you getting ak primer gray and what mr primer do you use what well, this stuff that i use which is ak's primer microfiller gray um i must admit use it <laughs> i might be going back to it at this rate after using it on this thing uh but again i've been using uh mr surfacer 1000 which 
right up until this it would have been my primer of choice but it's killed me on this thing so i don't know change your primer everyone just forget what i've been saying for the last couple of weeks <laughs> so yes but no i do there's reviews and everything i've done on this thing but i used it this is my staple thing for using for years and now i must admit i switched over to using this for the well since christmas really which is mr surfacer mr primer surfacer 1000 and it has been perfect it's worked on everything so we used it on the buccaneer we used it on this with no problem at all but unfortunately when i tried it on this guy it peeled so it's like ugh, not good uh phil says he's just subscribed to the floor remodel site can't remember why I left before. There you go. Oh, he resubscribed. Absolutely. Well, well done, Phil. Welcome back. Is there a wing fold conversion for the Hasegawa F4 Phantom? Not a resin one, as far as I know. But uh, uh, what's Hannon's photo etch company called? Airwaves. Airwaves yes. do it. Uh, they do a universal wing fold set, and I used to use that that set. It's quite cheap. It's quite basic. It's nothing elaborate, but it's good enough for what you need. Um, it literally is just. It comes as one, so you cut it out and then stick it to. As I do the outer wing tip, get it all fixed in there and fine. Put the hingey bits all in, then attach it to it. And because it's photo etched, the great thing is you can slightly bend it once it's in position to make sure it's all square. And again, it's cheap. It's a very cheap little fix on that one. But yeah, Airwaves do a, a universal one for all the Phantoms. Can I just get one out of here, Phil? It's a yeah. repost. We missed it before. So this question for the team. Abtalan website does not explain very well that what their matte effect thinners does. Sounds like it makes paints less glossy. Can you guys help me out? Is it good stuff? Is it Abtalan, is it? Yeah. I must admit, I haven't used it or heard of it. No, me neither. I've seen it. We've got it in the shop, but... Hmm. The usual thing with the matte effects, it's no different from Tamiya's flat base, 21. It's literally a, you know, uh, looks like wallpaper paste, doesn't it? Uh, and it it's a texture that you put into the paint, so the paint becomes rough, for want of a better word, which gives you a more flatter matte finish. So you can, the whole point of uh, X21 is technically not to put it in your gloss, but you add it to your paint to give it a more flat finish to your paintwork and stuff like that. I imagine, and I'm only guessing here, uh, it's something similar to that. No, I've never seen it. I've heard of it. Mm. I'm on it. And Mark's asking, was it Mark? Sorry, one of the guys asking where you get the um, star-shaped describing tool, deburring tool. Alex Scrapers. Alex Scrapers. Uh, as far as I know, HM Hobbies uh, in the UK, they used to stock it. Um, but if not, eBay. Uh, it's made by a company called Alex. So it's A L E C, A -E -C isn't it? Yeah. A L E C. A L E C. They do a few different versions. That's just the versions I've got, which are. Uh, I've got three. Hey, those are the two that I use. So it's like Ninja Star and other thing. So it's, um, where are we? There we go, it's these things. Other companies make similar things, but the Alex, Alex ones seem to be a lot stronger, aren't they? Than yeah, most. all it is is a bit of punch steel, but it really does do the job. It's very high carbon content. It doesn't bend. It's very strong, where the others are quite flexible and floppy, and I don't like that because I've got another one, which I won't mention it, but it's quite floppy, and what happens is if you're scribing, it goes a bit to the side and it cuts instead of scrapes. So that's why I've always stuck with these, to be honest. I've got the other one, which has got squarey edges on it and stuff, but to be honest, I don't really use it, so I'll just use those two. And to be honest, these, I've, I've just put the flooring model sticker things on them so I can pick them up, because otherwise you can't pick them up off the mat unless you've got nails. So I put those on them because they're domed, they rock, and it gives you a gap so you can pick them up. So that's not a daft idea, is it? I oh, see, just not a hat rack, you know. <laughs> 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 but I, I was fighting to get them off the cutting mat, and it's like oh, I'll just stick something on it. Uh, right, okay, so we've got Dan in here. Scaleworks released a Puma in one forty eighth, apparently. The SW4819. I'm going to have to have a look at that. Hold on. Only because I'll be interested if somebody has. If it's a good Who's done it? Scale works apparently. Scale mates. Have done it. 
everyone that scooting off. SW four eight. Oh, it's a complete resin and vac form with vac form mm. parts. That'll be fun. Yeah. Made in South Africa. Yeah. Two thousand and eighteen. Mm. Yeah, I'd so like to see what it looks like first. I'd like to see a proper review or something on that. And there isn't one by the looks of it, according to scale mates. So, yeah. The instructions are on there, though. But mm. yes, I don't know. I might do a little bit of digging into that to see that one. But uh, right, okay. Uh, I used the Revel One Thirty Second Puma and did a hind conversion using the Dragon One Thirty Fifth Scale Bell Two One Two for the Rambo Heli. <laughs> they are both on the forum about two years ago. There you go. I remember that one actually, Lee. Yeah. Do, do, do. Uh, right. Okay. Yes, we have four hundred and thirteen people looking. Do we? Oh, look, we've lost three. <laughs> hmm. Um. Do, do, do. Where are we? Oh God. Hold on. It's jumped. Uh, where are we? Oh my God. I hate it like that. Uh. Do, do, do. Uh, yes, right, Phil. Very thin coats uh, for all airbrushing. Patience is a virtue. It is. I'll tell you what, one of the biggest things you can get for, out of the hobby is patience. Because we've all done it, we've all rushed it, we've all taken a shortcut, and it will always come back and bite you on the arse. Wouldn't you agree, guys? Yeah. My biggest problem is that I'll paint something then i sit here for hours or days waiting for it to dry before then i go on to, before i then carry on doing it rather than painting something and then going on to another part of the model hmm. that doesn't need to be that like, i can touch yeah uh, for some reason I, I can't do that i just like carry on building the same bit that i'm always doing so it takes me forever to build a kit because you know i could have all the subsections built you know like the weapons done while i'm wasting for yeah, for a day or two for something to dry, but I never seem to do that. I'm just, mm. Yeah, crazy. I think sometimes you just get almost bored of waiting. You just want to get on with it. Yeah, you know, I know I sometimes when I'm building you. something, you just want to get on with it and get it done. And that's probably when... YouTube though, isn't it? I always end up like watching my computer and then <laughs> on YouTube for the next day. <laughs> <laughs> uh, will Mini Art bring out any planes? I don't know. Brought out pigeons, does that count? <laughs> They've done a couple of those like auto gyro helicopter type mm. things, haven't they? So they yeah. flirted with it, haven't they? Yeah. But it's a crowded, maybe this it's not their thing, is it? It's a crowded market. Mm. They've yeah. got their niche, haven't they? Uh, Filio says maybe you could do a paint range of hard to find colours. Yeah, honestly, I can't imagine me going down the paint route any day soon, to be honest. It'd take a lot of time and energy just to sort all of that out. Two things are very much in short supply. Uh, Phil, keeping up with the Sanders, it could be a new reality show. There you go. <laughs> we can do that. Funny enough, somebody said the other day, would I ever consider doing a straightforward live show all day of just following me round? And it's like, God, I don't have the technology to be able to do that because one, it would have to be on your mobile or something to do it. And my mobile would die instantly. Uh, but yes. Trust me, it's not that exciting. I spend most of my days doing mundane things like editing, lots of editing. As I say, I spent two hours doing editing today alone. And then obviously doing other bits and pieces like making up wash, packaging sanders, doing orders, all the boring stuff, paperwork, VAT. That was fun the other day because it's end of quarter. Uh, and all of the usual businessy things as well. So unfortunately, it's not all just a case of sat here making models. I wish it was. People used to like the videos you do with did going down to the post office, didn't they? Yeah, so yeah. you used to go out and about. <laughs> in in the car. Right? Out in the car. <laughs> uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Hello, guys. Hope you're all right. We're all fine. Thank you. Uh, Phil, right. Uh, that's it. Does anyone have any idea which Mirage F1 is the best in 148 scale? Uh, Italeri, uh, Kitty Hawk. Bearing in mind accuracy, detail, value for money. Ooh, tricky question. Well, let's face it. The 
Italy one's the old Esky kit, isn't it? Quick look. Quick, we need. Where's Matt when you need him? Yeah, I'll say that. He'll be chatting at the screen. What about the Z or the F1? Having a look now. That's our Mirage F1s on 48. No, it's, it's only Kitty Hawk and Italy. Italy's got it out at the moment. Yeah, Italy is old. That looks a bit on. New parts, new parts. Yeah, it's the old Esky kit. Yeah, it's the old Esky kit. So yeah. the trouble is, like we always say, is that although Kitty Hawk's probably not everybody's first choice uh, to build, it's going to be far, far more detailed than anything from an old Esky kit. So you're going to have to throw everything and his dog at the Esky kit or Italieri kit to get it up to scratch. Whereas sometimes it's easier to bite the bullet and the fit issues and various problems that you might have with the Kitty Hawk one. So chances are, if somebody said to me, build me one tomorrow, I'd end up doing the Kitty Hawk one. Because adding fine detail takes a lot longer than fixing, you know, mistakes, I think. Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, hi guys, what's your favourite varnish? I'm currently using Vallejo's Premium and it seems to be a very good choice. I must admit, I'm not aware of that one. My varnish at the moment is, to be honest, and it seems to be everybody's at the moment, is uh, Mr. Colour GX100 Gloss. It's really, really very, very nice. And they do a stable version of this as well, don't they, Andy? You've got that one. Uh, no, I've got the I've got the same as you. Matt's got the, um, oh, Matt's got the, the one. UV one. Yeah. It's got, which is a yellow label, but it's the same stuff, just UV. Yeah. Got UV protection in, into it, but yeah. No, that's what I use. And to be it's honest, only about 60%, percent I can't really comment on it yet, but this one I've used for a long time now, because actually Andy got me this bottle. Bless you. Yeah, probably did, yeah. Um, and I'm still only halfway through. Because it's really thick, it lasts forever. Uh, but the thing is, on this one, I use this, which is the actual Hataka one, which looks like a sample because it's a bit yellowy. But actually, it went on this beautifully. It, you know, we glossed it. There's a, a thing on it. You can see it. And it did. It just went on no problems at all. Really, really nice finish. But I don't know how long it will last and stand up and all the rest of it. So, But um, the Mr. Hobby one, the GX100, really, really nice. Thin it a lot. Like, I've been thinning it about 70%. And it does. It sprays on beautifully. Self-leveling thinners. It's a really nice gloss. Uh, Robert says, Hi, I see brilliant camo colour schemes on various models. How is this achieved? And look, It looks difficult to me. I'm okay. I'm only a beginner. Uh, where are the painting concepts? It's practice a lot of it. There's various cheats you can do. So you can use tack worm camo and masking techniques and things like that. Or you can just freehand it. And depending on what it is uh, and the effect you're after at the end of the day, highly recommend. Shameless plug, but it's free. So why not? Hey, go on tutorials uh, on the actual site and then literally just go into airbrushing, which is the middle one. Oh, no, click airbrushing, which is the middle one okay and there's various ones on airbrushing down in here and we do a couple of ones this one's got camo on it talking about doing freehand camo and stuff we've got masking for doing stripes and various other ones just in there like that and then down on these which is the airbrushing live they've all got different ones they cover different sections each week uh, and there's ones about camo down in there using worm camo stuff like that and then you've obviously got the full video builds as well, which you've got in the classics, which are all free to watch. These are all free to watch. So you can come in here and you've obviously got things like there. We've got a sea firing camo. A lot of these are in different cameras. So some are freehand, some are masked. Uh, the leaf camo we did on here, that's by using white tack as well, uh, going through the motions of doing all of those. So you can have a look at these and get a bit of a, a feel for it, you know, in the different ones. And they've got different camos on. And then obviously with the full video build, you've got some more which are a bit more in depthy these days uh, of doing them. So like when we were down here uh, working on this monster, which I not really build photos. Oh, here we go. Uh, so we would have done camo work, I'm sure, down in here. There we go. Showing about doing the camo. So I always start with the lightest color first, then go dark and then go back to light again for cutting in to give nice edges to it. 
uh, and to go through the motion. So we talk about spraying, obviously weathering, sanding back, you know, loads of stuff on there. But yeah, when we did that lump, that was fun. So yes, making a base and then finishing. So yes, so that's it. But as I say, it's one of those things. I wouldn't be too, again, worried about it. You know, it takes time, practice, and you get sort of used to it. But say sometimes you can just freehand it. Uh, other times you can cheat, which is what I usually do on the smaller scale. So centi second, 48 scale, I usually use uh, tack worm. So these are oil free. So it doesn't mark your, your model at all. But basically what you do, you come along, you have your tack worm and you pop it on your model to use it as a mask and you just go around it all how you want it and then you spray. And then because it's got the curve of the tack, it gives you a nice soft edge uh, and you can position it where you want. So it's basically masking and stuff like that. There's loads of videos all about that one. You can see all about those. And... Matthew says, what's the best primer to use? What are you guys using for primer? Tell me a lack of things. To be honest, that's what I use. I'm using either the AK primer or the uh, Mr. Hobby Surface Primer 1000. Yes, I must admit, Neither. I'm not going to say these days because I've just had a problem with it. But I have been <laughs> using the, the Surface Primer until literally yesterday. And again, yeah. it just failed me on that one. I'm like, <laughs> it was going really, really well right up to there. Uh, what is the best paint colour to use for the Tonka GL1 cockpit? I should have a quick answer to that. It's XF 53 or 54, but I've forgotten. 54 is dark gold grey, which is US standard interior cockpit colour. So I don't know if that it's follows suit. The official name is Admiral, Admiralty Grey. Yeah. But I, it's, I think I... See, no one does a nice Admiralty Grey though, do they? Because it's got like a uh, bit of a blue in it, hasn't it, Admiralty Grey, but... I hmm. use XF 53 then. It's the lighter of the two, isn't it? Don't take any notes of the cap colour because it's the wrong way round on them. Mm. I can't remember. Good question. I just tend to use XF53. It's probably not the perfect match, but once I've weathered it and painted the panels up and got the seats in, I think it looks all right. Have you ever noticed it? Because the XF53 has got a darker cap, but when yeah. you look at the paint colours, it's lighter. So why did they do it? It's like they got the wrong caps on. They've always done it. It's always fooled me. Just to keep you on your toes, isn't it? Yeah, because it is. I always think 54, because I use it for sort of, you know, dark gold grey, because it's pretty close to it. And uh, But you say 53, but the colour caps are darker and lighter, and you go that way, and it's the other way around, and you're like, why? Why did you do that, Tamia? But they've always done it, because it's always been one of my little... <laughs> Uh, apparently the communists are taking over. Thank you, Tina. Are they? <laughs> Don't ask. Are they? Apparently. Okay. Uh, speaking, of leaving... lot, no? <laughs> speaking of leaving fingerprints, I'm fairly new to this and I've got fingerprints in my paint, especially the gloss Tamiya and Mr. Hobby. How do you get rid of them? Uh, or is it even possible? Okay, Steve, this is purely because gloss paint takes a lot longer to dry than flat paint. You know, if it's a normal matte finish, it dries no problem at all. But gloss can take a long, long time to dry. So again, talking about earlier, patience. Honestly, leave it for a couple of days if you're doing heavy handling with it, okay? Because otherwise it can just, you know, especially if you're holding it for a while, your hand's warm, and before you know it, you've got fingerprints in there. So anyway, Andy, tell us, so how do you get rid of anybody who's ever left a fingerprint in their paintwork? To fair, mine wasn't that bad because it was... <laughs> almost gone off so i just left it and they, and they went yeah but if it's not too bad i'd just probably go over with a bit of thinners see if it'll see if it'll blend in initially to start off with if not let it completely dry and then rub it with a blue sponge sander yeah medium water, sander. really yeah. warm one and just then go over it again wow. yeah yeah, yeah. Andy's describing a trick. It's quite a good one as well. If you get like rough texture on your paint or a fingerprint, what's sometimes worth is just to load up your airbrush with neat thinners and just spray the localised area quite wet, but for God's sake, don't touch it because it will just come off on your hand and just see what happens. 
because sometimes fingerprints will literally just disappear um, and I've done it loads of times and they'll go but also if you've got like rough texture so if you've got this you know I call it vortex area where you get like a 90 degree you get the, the, the airbrush is blowing in and it's doing this and it's drying the paint as it's airborne it sticks and just give it a coat of thinners just pure thinners right over the top and then just leave it but god's sake don't touch it because if you touch it it'll just all come off in your hand and just see because what it'll do is eat all the speckly bits on the top all the rough stuff and it'll smooth out and give you a nice sort of satin finish um i know guys who literally will spray an entire model after they finish painting it just with thinners and just leave it so it just all self levels and it, it sorts itself out but it works quite handy on fingerprints but if not as i say just give it a light sand over with a like a medium sand a blue sponge you got something else like that and then just go in with a fine one just to feather the edge and just blow it back in because you're only taking the actual fingerprint bit off you're not trying to get rid of everything just lightly sand over the top of it and just blow it back in a question a couple of posts ago username is Strega. what's your su suggestion for a good re rescribing tool and that's the holy grail isn't it yeah i think to be honest if you're just doing a can't find it if you're just doing occasional rescribing use a tool you've probably already got yeah right so and then i mean i've got every scriber going and i've still not found one that's perfect but that one is pretty close just a standard jlc razor saw yeah i must admit for me it gets asked a lot and i am a massive fan of john's uh umm scribers uh which is these ones which camera we're going to do do this one so as i say you got the number one the old one so it's umm usa scriber one which is that one then they did the number two which is more of a straight version yeah need the right thing to come through there we go that blinding the camera and then the latest one which i really like is my favorite to be honest is the number three uh which is this one it's got a long handle the great thing with these you can drag to scribe but also you can push to scribe but i like using the long one here the flat and i literally carve and push and to be honest i was using it on this as well to go around here and we used it the other day live i did all the scribing because i had to put all this topping so i sanded it all off so i rescribed a lot of it and a lot of it is by pushing so you literally just push and can go around with them so really handy like that what you got, Andy? i think we, t we talk about it a lot don't we but i mean yeah. everybody starts off with the trumpeter which is a good tool yeah, yeah because it's cheap and it's easy also easy because of the way it's shaped it's easy to get into right to the edge of your wing so if you're describing a wing or something you can get right into the edge of it it's easy but then there's also the tamiya pea cutter which is a very common one but because of the shape of that you can't get into the edges as well as yeah, you can you with the trumpet the corners. but both of them uh, i mean that's what i use all the time is the umm one yeah I, I, I prefer this one i know phil's got three different ones but i prefer that one that's what I use all the time. That's just nice, nice, easy to hold, and you know you can push it or drag it. You know, push it works really well with it. Just, just nice, easy in the hand thing. Mm. Mm. Right. Well, I think what we'll do is, if you've got any questions, shout them out, Andy, from the site, and then we'll just whip through because we're going over big time. <laughs> Graham says, Nathan, what blade do you use in your saw for scribing? I think it's like the CMK one, isn't it? See it yeah. It's whatever came with it. It'll be a CMK, I'm sure it will be. Which are, I've got them here because I've got a replacement pack for them, uh, which is these ones. It so, just says, I've still got one in the They do different ALP. types. So these are what they call the very smooth saw. <laughs> so it's the H1006. And replacement pack because i must admit the only trouble is they do snap if you bend them they will ping because they're very thin like all good tools are but no that's this, the ones i'll show you on the overhead i've got this it's in a sealed packet it's gone from in rusty where are we pointing over there it just comes in 
I got the JLC there. Yeah. And I've got a, a blade that's still in its plastic box. But, like you said, these things snap really easily, don't they? And yeah. they can road yeah. as well. I must I admit, I, mine's a JLC, exactly the same, uh, and I've used up all their blades, so I must admit, I've just got the replacement set from CMK because they're just the same. Yeah. Very, very fine. Very nice. This is the one that's probably going to annoy people more than anything else, but Godhand do a, a panel line file, mm -hmm. and it's called an MTY-S-R. That rolls off the tongue, doesn't it? But that... <laughs> But this is like a really, really super thin file. And yeah. That's quite good for panel lines because you can push and pull. Yeah. But that is just ridiculously expensive, like all God and stuff. But you can get that at that 1999.co.jp website. Yeah. Or you can go to Japan. <laughs> it's your two choices, I think. Mm -hmm. Uh, right, so uh, one for the team. I always keep all my empty blue Rebel uh, bottles, the square ones. They're great for long-term storage of my own paint colour mixes. And they're easy to open. How do you store your paints? Tammy bottles. Yeah, I, yeah. Admit, I do Tammy bottles as well. <laughs> keep me Tammy yeah, bottles, but... wash them out, and then just yeah. reuse them. Yeah, hundreds, hundreds of them lying around. Yeah, boiling hot water tends to get rid of the old paint. I've found. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah, boil them out, and obviously it gets rid of the label as well. <laughs> so you've got a nice <laughs> glass jar. So I've got all got these jars with loads. multiple coloured lids. Yeah. <laughs> just that the wife shouts at you when you do them in the bathroom sink. Apparently, <laughs> what well, lids that, everywhere? <laughs> Put them in the dishwasher next and see what reaction you get. Yeah, yeah that's that's it. Idea. I might try that. <laughs> Uh, 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 Graham says, I hope everyone's staying safe. We are. Uh, Stuart says, white balance can distort the colours. Absolutely. Um, Leighton says, I use Vallejo metal colour and get on with them. The big thing is, and I think the thing is everyone has to understand is, if it works for you, use it. Do not be swayed by what anybody says. Any modellers or YouTubers or anybody who says they're an expert, don't listen to anyone. If you've got a product that works well for you and you get on really well with it, stick with it. Because I know, you know, we're all guilty of it. Somebody says, oh, it's great and you ought to go out and buy it, like primers, because I'm a sucker for primers. Uh, and we all traipse off and buy them and give them a go. And, you know, it's a false economy because we all end up back to using Tamiya. <laughs> it's primer and away you go but it is that thing if you've got something that works for you stick with it that's my biggest piece of advice uh otto says hello from devon whereabouts in devon are you that's the question because i'm in devon uh i have the italeri rebox of the fajami 172nd mig 21 love the decal options what's your opinion on the kit many thanks to be honest with you i haven't built that one I've done loads of theirs. I've done all their intruders, their tomcats, and lots and lots of other ones because I did a bit of a commission for the Jami a few years ago for the Nuremberg Toy Fair. Um, but I must admit, I haven't done that particular kit, so I can't comment on that one. Have you only ever, ever built that one? I think there's some comments in our forum. Mm. Someone's built it, and I think there's a few shape issues, but apart from that, nothing wrong with it. Yeah, right. But yeah. I think it's. I think it's one of those things, it, it's not a million miles out. Yeah. It's not as nice as the Eddard one, but... Well, I think that's the gold option. standard now, isn't it? The Eddard yeah. ones, they're literally the gold standard for it all. Uh, do, 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 do. I use Wilco Rattle Can Primer with no problems. There you go. That's the whole point. Mm -hmm. Works for you. Yeah. Um, do, do, do. Apparently we had 405 people. <laughs> that's good. Uh, thanks for answering the question. Cheers, no problem at all. Uh, why isn't there a decent glue for photo etch? Super. Yeah, CA glue, or like a bit of uh, like a five minute epoxy if you want a bit of time to move it around, or if not, PVA glue. That tends to be my way. As long as it's not uh, something where you're going to be handling it, PVA so glue I normally. I saw a modeler using that. Yeah. Um, a while ago uh, for putting large photo etch on mm -hmm. and it basically is it's just a thick super glue in a tube gel and type yeah does, yeah yeah gel yeah it does work works really well because you keep yeah you got well, as it says 60 seconds to move stuff around and do what you want with it so which makes it easy 
Uh, hello, Phil and the team. Uh, we've got Graham says, what is the best way to do streaks on your model? Oh, there's loads of different oils. Go back a couple of nights when we were doing it live. I was playing with oils and showing all about it on that one. Uh, we'll skim through some of these because obviously we're running out. Post up your questions tomorrow and we'll answer them a little bit more in depth. Uh, hello, gentlemen. Uh, having a big stash help with the lockdown? Does it help having it? Well, Andy's got the biggest stash out of all of us. Or the most expensive. I've, I've got about 300 kits, but yeah, but you only can build one at a time, can't you? So yeah how long's the lockdown how long's the lockdown gonna last yeah, that's it for all here like next year and he'll be the <laughs> only one with any kits still to build <laughs> apparently yeah. mini art has announced a line of 148 scale fighters no subjects have been said yet ah, there so there you go so that's it phil do you know uh, if the old italary 172nd js 39 gripen goes together okay it's been reboxed by kp i know that kit and i have built it it's incredibly old it's the old prototype version i don't think it's even a representation of a modern grip and that's your only trouble with that one but there is a bit of a lacking in that particular kit i know kitty hawk did a version of it which is probably the most up-to-date one because all the old italieri ones are all the prototype versions from yeah in the 90s so yes but i must admit i do love the uh, he's saying about the swedish splinter camo so yes very nice indeed Halford's Grey Primer, absolutely, and Halford's Fridge White as well. Domestic appliance white for anything that's white. Uh, Phil had the Colour 1000 Primer peeled in a few areas on his Airfix 172nd Skyhawk and the Fujami kit. Never had a problem with the 150 Primer though. Ooh. Well, I don't know. Hmm. I must admit. Uh, Jason says he'd kill for a 30 minute tutorial on Photo Etch. Sorry, Jason. Jamie, I can't read tonight. I'm getting tired. Uh, but no, trust me, there is one. There's two, actually. There's a two-parter on using Photo Etch and everything. The tutorial section on the uh, Flory Model site. Go and have a look. You can watch them. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Good evening. Uh, forgot you tonight's... Uh, hey, what? Forgot you're on tonight. Yes, we are. Uh, what do you think of Model Zone's workstation? Oh, it looks very similar to one that maybe I did, but there you go. Hi, everyone. Greetings from Germany. There we go, and we're done. Clear. Can and I in. just reply to Ed? Yes. Ed, I did. I have replied to you about eight posts before your post that you've just done. Um, I have for the Tonka. I just need not the javelin yet, and I'll do the thing tomorrow for it. That makes sense. You'll know what I mean. You'll know what I mean. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Pre-order prices for everybody else. Oh right, is that what it? Oh yes, yes, we were talking about that earlier. Yeah, definitely. Yes, we sort all of that out. Right. Okay. A couple of things just to talk about. Tomorrow, you're going to watch tomorrow. Want to watch tomorrow afternoon's show if you want to get a fifty percent discount on Flory Models products for the weekend. For a weekend, I am doing a special Easter egg hunt on the Flory Models site. So what happens is, it's all in the free to view areas and all the rest of it. You, some the, I'm going to hide some eggs around the Flory model site tomorrow afternoon okay and over the case of the weekend if you find them and it's going to be limited to the first 10 people then um you get 50 percent discount promo code on anything so you can buy one bottle of wash you can buy 100 bottles of wash and you'll get 50 percent off the lot postage is on top of as always but um yes so that's a little easter present on anything so anything from the Flory store pigments washes and uh, sanders but it's going to be a 50 percent off for the first 10 people who can find the eggs on the Flory model site full details will be up with you tomorrow on that one so, so we yeah. don't we don't get eggs then you don't actually get an egg i'll tell you what i will throw in only because i might have actually bought a box of 48 cabbage cream eggs the other day on uh, before the world went to crap <laughs> Uh, they were on special again for nine quid for 48 so i bought a shed wow. one for, out of amazon uh, but anyway don't forget tomorrow i'll have the review of the display uh nippers uh, the number three nippers that'll be up with you tomorrow and then we'll be up with you again tomorrow afternoon i'm thinking uh, around about three o'clock if everyone's up for it we okay for that one gentlemen yep yep is, uh, there, is there just one show tomorrow or i think there is only one i wasn't planning on two I think Matt did mention something before we came on about... About two. Well, look, we'll say we've won, and then if we do another one, then that's a bonus on top, and we'll go through. Okie dokie. But it's Good Friday tomorrow. It might feel like a Sunday, because every day feels like a Sunday, but it's actually Good Friday tomorrow. Yeah. Where hopefully I'll be doing raised panel lines on this little guy as well. So plenty to see and do tomorrow. So it will be cool. 
Right, good night guys, stay safe, and uh, we will see you tomorrow at three o'clock in the afternoon, live here, if you'd love to come and join us. I'd like to thank Andy, as always, for being a complete star, and Nathan for always fantastic work. Uh, for non-members, I'll put Nathan's video on his tornado out on the main site tomorrow as well. It'll be in linked up. You'll see it all. I'll put all the others up there as well. So you can guys can catch up with all of that. So that'll be good. So yes, thank you to everybody in the actual uh, chat room on the Flory Model side as always. Thank you guys. You're all stars and everything. And we will see you tomorrow at three o'clock. Right. Night night everybody. Say goodbye guys. Bye. Bye guys. Bye. Bye.